Hey everybody, welcome back to the episode on Mighty Mall Shop Creations. Today, I'll be showing you my dad's Ravel Truck Series Snowplow Kit. So without further ado, let's roll the intro. Alright, so as you can see, we have it going around on a turntable. And um, my dad's going to tell you guys about a couple cool stuff that he did on this truck and like the details and whatnot so uh what's what's a couple of details that you'd like to list off uh well since you've seen it i mean i think last time we did a video on this it was like all bare plastic and uh there was no paint whatsoever and so i added paint, <laughs> <laughs> added paint. well and some weathering and some static grass and a bunch of other stuff um but yeah i think it turned out all right Actually, I'm. It, it turned out more than all right. I'm actually. Uh, I'm actually pretty impressed. Uh, I got a bunch of weathering stuff from uh, like AK or whatever. Some some uh, dust, essentially. Um, I used to use chalk pastels, and I used to just shave them down with my exacto blade, and then I, you know, play around with that. But uh, it takes a lot of work and a lot of time. But uh, anyways, yeah. So here it is. I put it on the base and. Uh, I was playing around with some static grass. Um, I think it turned out pretty good. I mean, I've been kind of screwing around with this stuff for, I don't know, this is probably like my sixth attempt to kind of get it right. Um, it's kind of a funny thing because uh, you have to, I think the glue that you use or the, the adhesive that you stick the grass to initially is really important. Because um, if you get it too thick, it doesn't stand up with the static. If it's too thin, um, it just falls down after the static kind of goes away. Um, but anyway, so I, I, I did it on uh, parchment paper and I tore off some of the bigger stuff. Um, like you notice here in the front, there's some, whoop, backwards, some bigger turfs and stuff. So I just did that on parchment paper and tore it off and then just stuck it to this base. This base I did kind of just by itself and I you know scrape some stuff off and whatever um, but it's a funny thing because um, I watched like a lot of static grass videos and there's a ton of really good videos out there but one of the things that kind of uh, was a light bulb moment for me maybe um, you know you see these guys and they're doing static grass and they have it on a on a tin baking sheet or like a cooking tray or whatever um, <clears throat> and you apply the static grass and it all sticks up and whatever, but as soon as you remove the static grass applicator, sometimes it just kind of all just flops down and it doesn't create like a really good, uh, like tuft. So what I did, and I can't believe no one has mentioned this on a video before, um, but you just essentially just take this after you do it. Yeah. Not the camera. yeah. And you take it on parchment paper and you just hang it upside down. And that way all of these fibers go, you know, straight down and it works out really, really good. Um, so yeah, after you're doing your static grass application and whatever, just use some clothespins or whatever you got on hand and just hang it upside down for the night. And then in the morning, I guarantee you, your tufts will be mint or mintier than what you could do if you didn't hang it upside down. Use gravity, right? I mean, why reinvent the, <laughs> why reinvent the world? But uh, anyway, just uh, there's your quick tip of the day. <laughs> Something that I found funny while he was um, kind of doing more details of this kit was I saw him chopping off the door and I was wondering if he was going to hinge it or not. But then he glued it back on because I think, well, it's obviously um, a different color than the rest of the body. So it's like a parts, leftover part from a different truck that he used to replace the normal door but uh he i think he glued it on kind of wonky-ish i don't know yeah that was kind of a lot of work for a little bit of detail um and the thing about it is too i mean i could i should have actually when i cut the door out just painted it off the truck black and i wouldn't have to worry about taping um but i didn't do any of that <laughs> so i cut it off and took i don't know an hour or so to scrape it and make sure i didn't screw it up and then I glued it just slightly off, um, like a sagging door would, right? Um, yeah, anyways, so I spent way too much time 
um, taping and masking and, and whatever. But anyway, so the, the end result, I think, worked out pretty good. Yeah, another cool thing that I thought was um, pretty interesting that we may have mentioned in the first video or episode was that this part right here, he, I think he dremeled it out or something like that or just carved it out and put styrene sheet and drilled a little hole in the styrene sheet to make it look like the um, turn signal had broken or been taken out. So that was also a cool, uh, cool little detail. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of, so a lot of, um, I think model building is like, you know, you have the overall model and you have this idea and whatever, but like, if you just take like a wheel and if you just use that a, like one wheel as like, you know, what you're working on, if you just apply that to like the bedside box and this fender and that mirror and whatever, you can really come out with like some pretty impressive details. Like, um, you know, like you mentioned, right? There's the hole here and then I kind of wallered this out and then I used some styrene trim to make some, uh, the, the actual chrome piece that goes around. Um, I don't know. It's just that extra little bit of pop, right? And there's some stains here from the, uh, water that was coming down. I added some chains and some hydraulic cable. Um, and these actually were wire. And then I used your trick actually with the, uh, remember on your Rambler kit, you oh, yeah. used, uh, you had a missing shifter or something. Oh yeah. And, uh, so the shifter knob, I think you used just, um, of the industry's glue. And yeah. Yeah. So I figured this is a snowplow, whatever, like he needs these things to figure out where the heck his snowplow is. So I did the same thing and it turned out pretty good, I think. Um, yeah, but the, the good thing about styrene is, I don't know if you can see this, but like you can honk on this a little bit and that styrene is really flexible. Like you're not going to break it off, which is, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, evergreen styrene is really good for that because it's made for like bending and manipulating it right so you can scratch build stuff and do stuff like this yeah yeah and it holds on good it works out because i mean it replicates like bendy metal and whatnot so yeah even in the box here like i just used a bunch of scrap wood and this is like a, just a tissue um that i soaked in half glue and half water and it was just a uh, floral foam um we use that to uh you know just stick stick your uh, uh, clamps in and whatever to kind of hold it while it's drying and stuff like that. Um, this piece actually, this piece here um, is a photo etch basket um, from Ken Hamilton, which uh, he had a, for a short time, he had a, a shop, it was called Wild Hair Models or something, and he did a lot of like photo etch stuff. Um, and I was lucky enough to pick up uh, one of these photo etch kits of the baskets. And I also have a 124 scale um, shopping cart, <laughs> which um, is a little obscure, but is really, really cool. Um, he's If you don't know Ken Hamilton, look him up. He's a, he was the inspiration for me for many, many years. And uh, I think he's still around. Um, he had a lot of his stuff, uh, like in, you know, art, art installations and stuff like that. But anyways, I digress. But uh, yeah, just junked up the back a little bit here, put some stuff in, did some weathering. I did lights on the uh, uh, wiring for the lights, wiring for the uh, the lights on the snowplow here, did some hydraulic hoses. Um, yeah, and just, I don't know, spent a lot of time looking at it and, you know, doing washes on this, washing, washes on that. Yeah, I'm, I really like how it turned out. I mean, he also... Uh... He also used the hairspray technique for the rust and stuff, just for like the base rust, and then he went over with craft paint and other stuff too, like um, <clears throat> uh, Tester's Creative X. I don't think they're around anymore. I think they discontinued that line, but they're really good for like oil stains and stuff. But something that happens when it dries, it gets all kind of sticky almost, so that's a bit of a bummer. Um, <laughs> the the right mirror actually broke off about 10 times. Now. Oh my God, at least <laughs> this one right here. I don't want to touch it. Oh, there we go. I touched it. It didn't fall off. It's a miracle because I swear <laughs> that it, that is, it's come off many, many times. And it was on the floor for about, 
a week and a half and it survived a vacuuming a vacuuming um anyway so i found it and put it back on i was just gonna leave it off and have some kind of story like it you know he broke it off and it got found or whatever but anyways i found it and now it's back oh sorry i bumped the camera there no, okay. <clears throat> but uh yeah anyways it's it's one of these things you just kind of i built it for the model club or the model sh the model club that's meeting uh this saturday so i'm kind of going to sit it down and have one last kind of look at it before before I set it free in the club because those guys, you know when you go to a, like a model show and you get all nervous and try and polish your stuff up or whatever, um, that's one thing. Um, but when you <laughs> join a model club <laughs> and because those guys will give you unfiltered, uh, genuine feedback. <laughs> and sometimes it's a little blunt, but that's fine because some, you, you know, you kind of need to hear that sort of stuff, right? So, um, you know, they're gonna bust my balls on this a little bit here and there, but that's okay because I can make improvements for the next one, and that's good. That's that's what it's all about, right? It's all it's all in fun. Yeah. Um, speaking about model the uh, model club, we actually got the kit in behind this, so I'll show you that now. That that uh, seventy seven AMT or yeah, the AMT seventy seven Matador. It's um, I think it's an older release, right? I believe. Definitely. Yeah, and it is. I like the box art. I mean. I, I want to get, I like to collect Johans, but like this stuff is also pretty cool too. I find that pretty cool box art, but my dad got it off of, um, Brian at the, at the model club and, um, my dad's actually planning to build it as the, uh, what, what, what version is it? It's, it's the... a Barcelona. Yeah. I'm trying to pull it up on my pocket computer here. Here. Uh... Oh, there you go. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll let you... Uh... I'll turn off the glare one second. There we go. Right, uh... So there it is. I mean, it is the quintessential late 70s gas guzzler tax kind of ugly-ish. I mean, most AMC cars are not all that pretty. But anyways, but this to me is like quintessential late 70s kind of just wow. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to try and... Um, find the right paint and, and rims and whatnot to pull this off. But uh, anyways, yeah, and I actually have uh, this kit too. It's the mm -hmm. 75 um, Matador kit. Uh, similar, well, similar only in name, really. I mean, this is a, a NASCAR kit and whatever. But I was thinking of maybe doing like a comparison or like a side-by-side -side build, like build one at the same time as the other one and... But, uh, I don't know. I can barely finish one project, much less two at a time, right? So, we'll see how that all works out. But, yeah, so that is it for uh, today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. And um, <clears throat> make sure to stay tuned for this Matador build because it should be pretty awesome. But uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.